Today I want to talk to you, the betrayed spouse. Um, I think it would be great for you, if you're an unfaithful spouse, to hear this conversation. I really do. But if you're an unfaithful spouse, I really want to help you understand one of the best ways to see movement in a situation where you're struggling to find movement. Uh, it's very common that I'll talk to people who are trying to see movement with their unfaithful spouse and they're just not seeing it and so they're frustrated and there comes a point where they say you know what am I doing wrong or what can I do to generate movement and there's a saying it's very cliche but it is extremely true and that saying is what you tolerate you cannot change another way to say it is what you tolerate you empower what you tolerate you reinforce what you tolerate, you encourage. And I will tell you that there comes a time in certain situations where the betrayed spouse has to decide you are no longer going to tolerate these things. You're no longer going to reinforce these things. Now, I'm incredibly sensitive from Samantha's story as well as from mountains of email that I have received that at some point the betrayed says, wait a minute, I didn't ask for this. I shouldn't have to be the one driving the bus. I shouldn't have to be the one that is trying to lead recovery. I want him or her to take responsibility. I want them to show some onus of taking action. I absolutely get that. So this is not a blanket statement for every situation, but for situations where the unfaithful is just unhealthy. They're not there yet. They are not at a place where they could even be trusted to lead recovery. Today's vlog is for you. So let me give you a few thought processes, if you will, that I think it's really vital for the betrayed spouse to no longer tolerate. And one of them is you can't tolerate the belief system or the thought that your unfaithful spouse is going to cosmically just kind of arrive at empathy and remorse. It's just really a ground level truth. They don't typically find genuine empathy or genuine remorse on their own. Why? Well, because they're unhealthy. You can't fix yourself. That is a tenant that I'm going to share with you till I die is that typically you're not going to fix yourself. Many unfaithful spouses do not arrive at this overnight or even, you know, perpetual empathy and remorse because they, again, can't fix themselves. And so you, as a betrayed, cannot tolerate, you can't reinforce and encourage that you'll sit back and let them continue to blame you or pin it on you or, or excuse it and minimize it. If you want to see change, I just, I appeal to you as a betrayed. You're going to have to come to the point where you say, okay, I'm no longer going to allow and encourage and reinforce the fact that you get to blame me for your infidelity. We're going to go get help. We're going to go get expert help. I'm no longer going to allow this to continue in our life. Another belief system that I think you have to really wage war against is the belief system that you are going to tolerate their ambivalence. I see the best movement when a betrayed spouse in a situation where there's ambivalence decides to say, you know what, listen, no longer am I going to tolerate and reinforce your ambivalence. Now, the trick is to not say it's either me or the affair partner, because typically you don't get a lot of movement that way, because they're usually unhealthy and they're usually too far deep in. They're, they're, they're so out of sorts that it's really hard for them to let go of a drug like euphoria that they have been messing with. A much better way is to say, look, you either get help or X, Y, and Z. I don't know what those X, Y, and Zs are. Maybe it's separation, living in the guest room, moving out, um, filing for divorce. I don't know. Every situation is different. But there does have to be a point where you say, look, either we get help to decide where we're going to be or I can't live this way anymore. You cannot tolerate this perpetual ambivalence and in-between lifestyle 
because if you tolerate it, you're encouraging it, and there's typically not going to be this cosmic sobering up where one day they come home and say, okay, I mean it this time, I'm chasing you, and only you, because usually that moment is short-lived, and that moment happens time and time again. Here's another belief system that I think you have to really wage war against, and that is that the unfaithful spouse gets to have recovery on their terms. I'm sorry, you just cannot tolerate that mindset or approach because if you do, it's going to wreak havoc on you, it's going to wreak havoc on recovery, it's going to not really produce much results at all. Typically, what, what's going on is the unfaithful spouse is wanting life on their terms no matter what anyway. They're torn, they've gone back and forth, or they've had multiple affairs, or they've had this long-standing affair and they're not ready to give it up. I don't know, but I will tell you that if recovery is on their terms, you have a problem. If they continue to rattle off, well, I just don't like professionals, and oh, I don't trust counselors, and oh, I had a bad experience, and oh, I just don't like groups, and oh, you know, there's always an O. Oh. And there comes a point where you have to say, I can't tolerate this anymore. If you want to see movement, if you want to see change, you have to come to the point where you not become this raging lunatic, but where you become very calculated and very strategic. I Finally, you have to look out for the fact that you don't want to be in a situation where you make your unfaithful spouse a rock star. What that looks like is the affair partner is pursuing them and chasing them, and then the betrayed, you are trying to get them back. And so what happens is they get to kind of live in the middle. They get to, well, you know, I'm just not sure, and, and I'm just uncertain, and I'm kind of going back and forth, and I don't know, and I just, I want to be with you, but I can't let go, and all this stuff. I get it. But you can't let them be the rock star where they're getting all the attention from you and they're getting all this attention from the affair partner. There has to be a moment where you say, no, I am no longer going to tolerate this. I'm no longer going to allow this. I'm no longer going to encourage this. I'm going to take some of the power back.